You acting sus, bruh. Nah, dude, you lying. Pop culture loves the imposter trope, and the most recent video game to take advantage of this is the sudden hit Among Us, where you and your fellow Bean crew members try to identify the murderer in your midst, all the while you have to complete menial tasks that I assume real astronauts do in outer space. I recall Buzz Aldrin talking about how his duty on Apollo 11 was to empty the leaves bin. Survival in Among Us is determined by one thing, don't look sus. If you look sus, your friends will kick you into the abyss of space. Throw the imposter to the unagi. So, if you're a murderous imposter, how do you avoid looking sus? Well, you lie. And you better be good at lying to survive. I'm Ross Tokash, mental health counselor specializing in gaming. Let's take a look at the psychology of lying and why we believe the lies others tell us. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. Let's see if we can answer the question. Why the f you lying? Why? Why you always lying? So why do we lie? Because lying is pretty amazingly useful <laughs> in life. From a young age, we're often told to tell the truth. Then at some point, we find out we can lie and we get away with it. And in some cases, it can actually be fun to lie and get away with it. Dude, what a rush! According to Paul Ekman, who literally wrote the book or several books on telling lies, we learn to lie around the age four. It's also at this age we can distinguish lies from truths. It's actually pretty amazing that at this age, we can learn to mislead and learn how to detect lies. Think about all the mechanisms that have to be in place for a four-year-old to tell a lie. Memory, planning ahead, thinking about the target of the lie's perspective, language, choice, and convincing emotional control because you don't want to tell a lie and immediately give yourself away. It's not uncommon for young kids to start cheating at school or copying homework, and we don't really start getting better or more convincing with lies until pre-adolescent years. As adults, we're pretty good at identifying liars, which is a good thing because you don't want liars in your group or place of employment. These people get sussed out, and thus you no longer have to deal with the liar. Just like in Among Us, you gotta get rid of the liar. Ekman says we lie for several reasons, but in Among Us, the two that are most present are avoiding punishment and exercising power of others to control the info your targets have access to, also known as controlling the narrative. In Among Us, you want to avoid punishment at all costs. If you're the imposter, you don't want to get found out and ejected into space. You want to lie and get other innocent beings tossed into the vacuum of space, and their final thought being, You'll be sorry, Pee Wee Herman! Controlling the narrative is a much more nefarious type of lying. This is the type of lying that can be used by anyone, but it is often utilized by people who are part of the dark triad of personality traits. In Among Us, as the imposter, to win you have to control the narrative. If you kill a crew member, you gotta be able to point fingers at others and stir up controversy, doubt, and suspicion among the group, all while not implicating yourself. You see this in real life with narcissistic smear campaigns. In these situations, a narcissistic person will control a narrative in an attempt to destroy the target's reputation through character assassination and get their target ostracized or exiled from a group. They'll spread lies, rumors, and all sorts of things. And there's really very little you can do to stop it. It can get super nasty, especially once they recruit other people to start tearing the target down as well. It's a terrible experience to endure and one that people in narcissistic relationships or have a history of being bullied know all too well. A peer-reviewed study emerged from the illustrious Harvard University in 1979 on the topic of telling lies. Here they found out that Machiavellian participants were more likely to get away with lying. In part, it's because they utilized the tactic generally known as hamming it up, meaning they really exaggerated and were theatric when they were in the act of telling lies. Like I said before, what a ham. This served as a distraction that others couldn't pick up on. Machiavellian people in this study were able to hide their true beliefs through hamming, if they hated someone, they were able to ham it up as if they actually really liked someone, and vice versa. So we've seen that lying is something we've practiced since the age of four years old. We get pretty good at it, and some people with personality disorders become very good at it. But why are we so quick to believe lies? Why do we believe lies? Why is it that so many people will believe that the world is flat? 
Why do we believe that our partners will change after they've hurt us and apologize for the 17th time? Why do I believe my landlord when he says, I'll come and fix the toilet tomorrow? Sometimes denial is a very strong force, and we don't want to believe that someone would deceive us. Someone in power that we look up to or admire, or someone that we have put trust into, we don't want to believe that they'd be dishonest to us, and we are in denial of that truth. We are great at lying to ourselves, but we also believe lies because we ignore complexity in the world and overestimate how much we actually know. Furthermore, we've grown and evolved as humans to collaborate and listen to others. We're predisposed to believe what others are telling us. Dr. Thomas Landauer at the University of Colorado states that we as humans generally have one gigabyte of knowledge in our brains. Think about it. What do you actually know? Not what have you been told, really, what do you know? We actually don't know much, so we do two things. First, we lie to ourselves by ignoring the complexities of the world, and we act like we know more than we do. I actually think this gives us a feeling of comfort in a way. The world is a small, scary place, and it's incredibly complicated. I think this is how conspiracy theorists operate. You can really delve into the impossible complexities of world economics and politics, or you can just say a small group of powerful people run everything. And you know the real truth. Second, we believe others. Because of this one gigabyte of knowledge, we kind of have to share knowledge if we want to survive. I don't know how to go hunting, so I'll have to rely on someone to teach me how to hunt. And I'll just have to trust them when they tell me the best way to kill a wild boar is to corner it by a tree and read it my poetry from 10th grade. This is how knowledge is passed down. How did we build the pyramids, cathedrals, and that rickety Ferris wheel at the local fair that everyone says is totally safe and built by professionals? That information was passed down and people trusted no one was having a laugh several years earlier. So in short, that's why we believe lies. We're not as smart as we think we are and we trust others to be telling us the truth because that's how humans have advanced throughout the generations, through sharing this knowledge. And that's the reason why I get thrown out of the spaceship and among us every freaking time. I hope you liked this video on lies and the game Among Us. Thank you so much to those who like and subscribe and leave comments. So if you can, check out my other videos. And final note, get some friends or a family member to play this game with you. These are crazy times that we're living in, and games I played with friends and Among Us have been some of the most fun I've had all year. It's incredibly accessible to gamers and non-gamers alike. Till next time, take care folks.